Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair tutorial. Today I want to take a look at making a custom enclosure for these keycaps. Uh, so these are Cherry MX switches. These are the mechanical switches that are used in mechanical keyboards. And uh, it's red, green, or brown, it doesn't matter which color, they all have the same type of um, geometry. So the I have this little keycap that I made. It has a little stem and it sticks onto the Cherry MX switch. And what we'll do is we'll make an enclosure and then show you guys how you can make it adaptive to the position of the keys. So here's what I mean. So I'm going to start with making a new component because that's step zero. So right here I'll right click and then say new component and I'll call this one keys. And then now, now that that's active, I will import the Cherry MX component into this design by right clicking on it. And I'll hit OK. So now we want multiple of these. We want uh, multiple copies of these. So we can use the pattern feature under Create. We'll go to Pattern, Rectangular Pattern. And then I'll set my pattern type to be Components. And then my object will be this Cherry MX switch. And then my direction of which I want it to copy is along this edge here. So now I'll just drag out this arrow to make my three copies. Why not three? I'll hit OK. And now we have our three keys. So the next thing I'm going to do is make another component. Right click, new component, and this will be our case for the three Cherry MX switches. So now I have it open. Um, I'm going to click on uh, Create Sketch so I can make a new sketch. And I'll click on this uh, plane here. And with the rectangle tool, I'm just going to draw out a rectangle, I'm not being precise yet but we'll define this uh, now. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to say these edges need to be a certain distance between these surfaces here. So the way we can do that is I'm actually going to project the top of these keycaps, these surfaces here. So under sketch, there is a project. Uh, so I will click on this one, this one, and that one. And then under the project menu, I'll hit OK. So now if I hide the keys, you can get a better look at our sketches that we just projected. So um, these are colored purple to indicate that, hey, these are sketches that are linked to another object or another component. So now I can start using these uh, to set my constraints. So I'll say with the sketch dimension tool, I'll say from this edge to that edge should always be, let's say, 10 millimeters. You can see this moved over here. So now I'll say from this edge to that edge should also be 10 millimeters. And then we can even do points. So I'll say I want this edge to this point here should always be 10. And then let's go ahead and do this one as well on the right. This and that point, 10. So now we have our uh, dimension set. Our sketch is, is pretty much um, constrained. I can't move it around. It's locked in place now. So I'll hit OK. So now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and extrude out our profiles to make a little quick enclosure. Let's say it's 10 millimeters uh, thick. And then I'll even add some fillets. And I'll even add a shell so that I so it looks like a shelled uh, enclosure. So now I'll bring back my keys and you can see what our assembly looks like. Looks pretty cool. So now I'll go back to the, the main active component and what I'll do is I actually need to capture the position of these guys. And there isn't a menu to do that until you actually move something. So I'm actually going to go back uh, to this. Uh, I'm going to roll the history marker back here to where we started to uh, make our copies. And what I'll do is I'll click on the keys uh, component group. And then I'll hit the move key. And I'm going to move these guys over slightly over here so it's a little bit more centered with our grid. I'll hit OK. And now if you look over here in the top right, we have a position tool set. So we can either revert that or capture the position. I'm going to go ahead and capture the position. And if I go all the way to our the end of our timeline, you can see the enclosure has adapted to it. But let's say we want to, we want to modify this a bit more. So if I go back into the capture position, Let's say I want to move this Cherry MX switch. It's all the way to the right. Let's say I want to move it more to the right, like this much, to kind of give it some separation. 
Uh, as soon as I move it, I get presented with the po with the position tool set again. So I can either uh, cancel that or accept it. I'll hit accept. And as soon as I do, Fusion brings me all the way back to the end of the timeline and updates everything. So because we, we projected these three sketches and sets constraints, our enclosure knows to, uh, to adapt and change dynamically whenever we change the position of these keys. So this is a really uh, flexible way to create an enclosure that's based on the position of other components. So say we were still trying to figure out our, um, our layout for this little keypad, um, we can do that. Uh, we can do it in this method, and we don't have to worry about like having to update another sketch dimension. Um, ideally, what I would like to do is have these driven through dimensions, like the positions of these. But because they're linked and uh, using a pattern to make copies of it, um, there isn't a way to do that, really. Or at least I haven't found a way. Uh, another way would be is if we were to create all of these individually, inside this assembly and it was sketch driven then like the positions were sketch driven then we could create like a user parameter but the way we're doing it here I don't think there's a way to do it let me know if you guys know of a way to do that though but I hope you guys learned something new this is a quick uh, kind of a tutorial this week um, let me know what you guys think if you have any questions go ahead and drop them down in the comments that's it for this one and I will see you guys in the next one bye